People have been arguing recently that um, if you uh, have cyber war, then you can have a bloodless war. After all, you are having an impact on infrastructures, you're not killing people. Just consider that if you stop the traffic lights of a whole city, uh, ambulances and, and fire brigades would not work properly, and so on. So sooner or later, you are going to affect human lives. But that is first impression, and some military out there might consider that war is something more physical because it's less immediately uh, bloody. Cyber war is not only affordable, previous point, um, but it's also more easily uh, achievable by the individual. You don't need an army to uh, put a, a whole nation on its knees. Um, that is going to be something that we're going to see more and more frequently in the future. Again, huge uh, ethical issues there. Resilience in cyber war uh, comes with some erosion of human rights. More uh, cameras, more CCTVs, more checks, more airport uh, data shared between the US and the UK. When you think about the nuclear deterrent, we can just approve Tridents and they would not make immediately our life any more, more different than it was yesterday. We passed some legislation about cyber war that requires checks and say ID cards and for the checks and, and so on. Your life is going to be different tomorrow. Now, where the balance lies there, that's another ethical issue that uh, is being made as we speak. The more complex the systems we are relying on during some kind of either cyber war or IT based conflicts are the more difficult it becomes to make sure that someone is immediately responsible. Now this for ethics is a big challenge because we have 25 centuries of ethical analysis in the philosophy department based on two documents. One, look for the individual. Two, look for the human individual. So if a company does something wrong, sooner or later someone, Peter, John, Mary, you name it, is going to be responsible ethically. If something goes wrong in the army, then someone, an individual, will have to bear the responsibility of what goes wrong. We just delegate more decisions to automatic systems. There's a point where those automatic systems uh, generate issues and backtracking responsibility for what went wrong is not that easy. Interestingly, uh, classics are classics for a reason. So you uh, read uh, Machiavelli, the prince, and discover that some of the problems we're dealing with today are, in a different format, addressed there. First, if the prince wants to conquer Afghanistan, quote unquote, he has to go and live there. That is the level of commitment that will convince the population in Afghanistan that the prince is serious. He doesn't go to live there, they won't believe that he will stay forever. They will just wait long enough until he moves. And the second point, again, for Machiavelli, uh, is uh, mercenaries. Mercenaries are not taken seriously either. And your robots and drones uh, today are the you know, Renaissance mercenaries of good old days. The locals will not believe that uh, that level of commitment is there. So again, a cyber war fought uh, uh, by proxy has a huge cost, ethically speaking, in terms of decreased credibility of the commitment and therefore undermining the possible results that you might be able to achieve.